G'day guys, welcome to this week's weekly developer update. I'm CW and coming to you once again solo. Uh, just a little bit tied up once again this week. I'd just like to start things off and just speak a little about marketing. Uh, the the community is putting out um, some really great infographics of late. It's great to see uh, people getting involved on that front and um, everyone liking, sharing, retweeting, cross posting on uh, Reddit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, just keep up that work. It's um, gaining a nice little bit of momentum there. It's great to see. If you're a developer or a project, um, an NFT project, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you don't have a social presence, uh, by all means reach out to the Sigmanauts crew. Um, I dare say a number of people would be happy to sit there and um, sort of run that side of your project for you. Um, just uh, reach out, uh, talk to someone on one of the Telegram channels, Discord channels, etc. cetera, um, and I'm sure someone will put their hand up to do something like that for you. It's a great way to engage and provide um, updates and features and, and get your message out there for the community. All right, just on that note, let's uh, jump into the weekly developer update. So kicking things off this week, we have Lua Vatra and the Padea MVP. So uh, the alpha version of the SDK is ready, working on the API exposing the SDK functionality. It's just simple stuff compared to the SDK. Uh, we'll bootstrap the alpha tomorrow, so that was Thursday this week, to initiate the on-chain testing. Uh, large code base, which has only been tested in the test cases, so um, will 100% run into issues. So I hope to have a good picture of how th um, a big gap between the alpha, so private testing, and the beta, public testing. Um, so there is in, uh, see that the gap between this week's and next week's um, dev chat. So all the best there. Hope everyone sort of figures out what's going on and, and provides some updates in regards to sort of any issues that arise. Next up, we have Captain Nemo and the Fleet SDK. So he's added a box size and value estimation. Uh, this will fix problems with wallets and tons of NFTs. So now working to integrate it to the output builder and then Nautilus. I did a big refactoring on the serializer for improved performance and code readability. Moving on, we have Kushti. And on the protocol and reference client development side, uh, he's merged 5.0.8 into the master after fixing a test that was broken in uh, 1956. So he's now testing the node, uh, rescanning and additional indices, uh, and then we'll release 5.0.8 afterwards. A big chunk of the bootstrapping with the UTXO set snapshot code is under, under review and has also reviewed uh, pool, uh, ERP, uh, pool 93. So we'll provide, provide feedback on that shortly. And then on, on to Dexy, made code to deploy scans and contract uh, development, uh, deployment, sorry, requests for the node, issued testnet tokens and contracts, uh, aside from payout contract, which will be reworked. Next up, we have Grand Gambit. So added the possibility to choose a username to, to users and has been focusing on a in real life job recently. So can't have much time to dedicate to Grand Gambit. Next, we have MHS and the Rosenbridge update. So on the public beta test launch, he's configured uh, the watches and guards for the public test launch, minted all required tokens for the test launch uh, the config for token map and contracts to the test launch tokens and addresses has been completed. Added a release for containing soft launch tokens and addresses and added logos and updated text for the test launch. Right now, just doing some final tests with the new guard set and watches, tokens and settings. And as soon as that's finished, uh, the final test, the bridge will be open for Ergonauts um, and the test tokens will be sent to them. So if you want to jump on to uh, MHS's Twitter, yeah, you can see a couple of um, transactions going through and uh, the test tokens actually ending up on the Cardano network from Ergside. So it's great to see that moving ahead. Uh, the Rosenbridge CLI side, some R&D on the tools available to write CLI apps in the node is going on. 
the Rosen Launch Helpers. So they worked on developing some unofficial small scripts for generating secrets from random mnemonics. Uh, there's the minting tokens, creating box, etc. And then on the Rosen front end, added assets page to uh, display the bridge assets. And now they have to deploy an instance of the Rosen API and connect the UI to it. So that's a work in progress. Great to see everything going ahead on that front. Okay, next up we have Green Hat, who's been toiling away once again on the Oracle side. So there's a work in progress on minimizing the need for wallet rescans. Uh, it's reworking how they handle the node scans. Uh, there's a D register scans with the node along with uh, various refactoring in the Ergo node interface library going on. Uh, and besides that, the multiple instances of the same Oracle scenario was su successfully tested by error in the gold erg pool on testnet. And next up, uh, testing the new governance, so simplified voting in the gold erg pool on testnet. Uh, there has been a little bit of discussion from MHS. Um, he just uh, goes into how to deploy the Rosen bridge onto other networks. So I'll just read through this quickly. So adding to new chains will be faster as they as the messaging, so the watchers side and the settlement, the guard side infrastructures complete. Uh, adding new chains like BTC will be pretty quickly. Um, however, adding an EVM chain will take much longer. Uh, by the way, adding the first EVM chain paves the road for adding the next ones pretty quickly. Uh, there's no timeframes right now on that, um, but they plan to add a few chains this year, including BTC, uh, Binance Smart Chain, and Ethereum. So technically, adding a new chain consists of the following. So adding scanning logic to the watches, so how to look at the target chain, extracting information, how to read data from the target chain, adding transactions, uh, transaction building and agreement to the guard set. So that's how to create an unsigned transaction, how to multi-sign that transaction, and then creating a few multi-sig wallets for the lock, cold storage, fund, etc. So with the current ongoing refactoring of the Rosen's code, so Rosen chains, the abstract logic is going to be exposed. Uh, so adding new chains will be easier as implementing these logics. Nice to see. Okay, next we have Coutelier and the Emporis update. So has built a few bots with the help of ChatGPT and will now um, Telegram and Discord users can check the daily sales and new products being listed. Added a few more Ergo products. Uh, thanks for chucking on some hats and hoodies. I'll chuck in an order soon. Uh, started working on creating a payment plugin and dashboard in the WooCommerce for Ergo tokens and for future use uh, for the wrap tokens coins of the Rosen Bridge. It's nice to see that's going ahead. If anyone wants to check out Emporis, uh, it's emporis.io, I believe. You can jump on there. There's uh, numerous gadgets and things. You can buy drones and all kinds of bits and pieces that's uh, sort of logoed with uh, Ergo logos itself, but then also uh, many um, uh, dApps and, and products within the Ergo ecosystem have their branding on there as well. Okay, another one from Cotelia on the comments side. So they've actually done something this week, it's good to see, uh, integrated chat GPT to the comment Twitter, and now the, a the AI tweets daily. So what could possibly go wrong there? Uh, scrolling down, uh, Glasgow has been hard at work once again. Uh, he's created a public tager for the um, development project management side and a number of marketing initiatives as well. So for Sigmanauts, uh, Ergonauts, anyone who wants to jump into the ecosystem, uh, reach out and can get added to those boards. Um, he's done a lot of work. Uh, we've had a, we were running things previously in Notion. So copying um, all the current tasks from Notion into the Tager on a Kanban sort of setup. Uh, he's been vigorously sort of working behind the scenes setting all that up. So thanks very much for putting that in. Uh, so yeah, he's, Tager's an open source um, product. So basically you can have project management, it can track time zone, uh, timelines, 
Uh, you can have Kanbans, all kinds of bits and pieces. You can allocate tasks and whatnot. Um, so what it's just currently hosted on their cloud at the moment, but we will have a subdomain in the future for that. So excuse the ugly link currently. Uh, still setting it up, but provides a handy overview for people to keep track of the latest developments. So please sign up and contribute. Uh, sign from that, just working on a chat GPT chatbot trained on the Ergo Docs PDF, etc. Uh, Kushti shared a article, so it's just security disclosures for the ECDSA and the EDDSA threshold signature schemes. So if anyone wants to have a read of that. Uh, moving on, we have, uh, it looks like we have Ilya from Spectrum. So on the Spectrum network side, they were testing the signature aggregation protocol. And that's a work in progress currently. Uh, have implemented a platform for quick network behavior simulation, simulations. On the Spectrum finance side on Ergo, uh, so just whipping the yield farming bot into shape, it's a work in progress. Uh, fixing bugs as they come across them from the community and stress testing, that's currently also a work in progress. Drafted a lottery protocol for a consensus group of members elections. Uh, they will use a uh, proof of stake consensus and VRF as a source of randomness. On the Cardano side of Spectrum Finance, they're preparing the stable release. Um, the back end, final updates for the new history API, uh, yield farming API, etc. Final updates for the SPF fee. And on the front end, fixed manual refund behavior for the operation history. Fixed refund action call for the new operation history. Uh, there's a little uh, yield farm test text fixes. Uh, also added ergo pay support for the yield farming stake, unstake operations and have added the platform pool chart analytics on the card owner side. Full steam ahead once again. Uh, so scrolling down, uh, there's a nice EIP, EIP45, so the redistribution of the contracts for the storage rent fees. Uh, that's coming up, or well, storage rent will be initiated in a couple of months uh, time. So. Uh, the discussions around the ERPs and how to distribute those funds and things like that's uh, just started once again. Um, it's good to see that sort of ongoing. If you want to jump on and, and review and provide comment, by all means do so. So scrolling down, we have an update from Rust in my eye. So uh, sorry, he's a little bit late. Uh, just been something he's been working on. So he's actually created an ergo node for the Android and a mixer um, variants also. So the goal is to create a simple app for someone to run the node on their Android device. Uh, this first release is a little bit is a sketchy proof of concept, and is currently working on giving the app a, a unique a app ID and adding a custom file system to the Bootstrap. So if you want to check that out, by all means, jump onto his Git. And QX, he uh, says, oh crap, he forgot he's made something this week. He's getting a bit old, mate. Uh, so on speaking of age, he's added a box age functional functionality to his uh, bot. So you can use the command uh, EP box age and then paste your address and it will spit out your box, the age of your boxes. So you can DM the bot if you have, don't want to, People knowing your address, uh, the bot will delete your input command as well, just in case. Uh, so uh, it's also added a web cert function into the AI bot. You can type uh, EP open AI DDG and the prompt, and uh, it'll first run your prompt through the DuckDuckGo and then back into the chat GPT with the top 10 search results included. So that helps with current info for normal GPT searches. Uh, just keep you using the EP Open AI prompt. Um, that'll change a little bit once it gets uh, GPT-4 access. So that just sort of ties in a little bit with the storage rent. Uh, people will need to know the age of their boxes in order to not um, for those boxes not to be subject to uh, storage rent fees. 
uh, it's something to keep in mind and it's a nice little utility that is created there. Uh, this nice little screenshot just showing uh, the box age. So there's one box, uh, box is 0 0.14 uh, in years. So it's got a little while to go in regards to actually uh, being subject to storage rent. Another uh, example of the open AI DDG, so the new topic uh, posted in 2021. Uh, scrolling down. We have Analog Ergo, so just working on the GUI, uh, just researching optimizations to atomic swap processes. A little bit more chatter here in regards to some timeouts. And finally, looks like we have a non-real and the auction house update. So this week they released the auction house on testnet uh, for a handful of volunteered artists. Uh, the main goal is to test processes such as minting, listing, uh, bidding, buying, and collection creation uh, to make sure that everything works as expected. Uh, they're actively uh, reviewing the uh, issues artists file and fix them. Uh, the, other than that, they've just a uh, couple of major and minor UI fixes. They've fixed the UI to show featured artworks in the home page and explore auctions page. They've also enhanced the auction preview page to show all pieces of information related to the auction and just not and not just partial information. And also fixed duplicate notifications. All right, guys, that sums up this week's weekly developer update. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And if anyone is looking for sort of um, some marketing assistance, by all means, reach out to uh, the Sigma Nauts group. Or if you're willing to donate your time um, and efforts, uh, by all means, reach out to any developers and try and help out on that front. Thanks everyone. Have a good one.